Hi guys, it's me, Chazar HD, and welcome today to another podcast episode where me and Nib are going to do a review of pre-season testing, a three-day test that was very interesting, and we are coming away with some interesting stories and a grid going into the season that doesn't quite look possibly how we thought it was going to, uh, going into the first Grand Prix and the Grand Prix after that, especially in the midfield, looking very, very close there. So what we're going to do in this video is go through all the teams and um, how they did in testing and how we think they're looking going into the season and then kind of give, I guess, some predictions um, for the season ahead based on what, you know, we've seen so far. So let's just get straight into it. Now, Mercedes, the first, of course, team we're going to go into, the champions, did not have that good of a testing program. The car did look a bit unstable at times. They didn't quite do as much running as they wanted to. Definitely on the first day, they did nowhere near enough uh, running on the first day of uh, testing. They did improve on that, though, in the final day. But even though I still believe they will have the best car come the first Grand Prix, their preparation has definitely been hampered quite a bit. I don't think anyone can deny that because in the past, Mercedes have been very strong on the reliability and just consistent uh, C front. So they're definitely not as strong looking, I think you could say, going into the first Grand Prix. But I still think, realistically, they are the team to be going into 2021. The gap is probably closer. Uh, we'll see, of course, once we get to the Grand Prix. Uh, but Nib, we'll get into what you think about Mercedes and... From what I've heard, um, you actually think that Mercedes might actually be under threat this year. Oh, I, I mean, if you if you base if you purely go off preseason testing, then yeah, you'd say they are absolutely going to be challenged this year. Um, you know, of course, day one they had that gearbox issue, and I mean, if they dis if they had done a shakedown like other teams beforehand. I mean, I don't think they probably have that issue on day one of testing. So I think certainly a bit of room there to criticize them, but they do have a filming day, as we're talking about earlier, between now and uh, and the Bahrain Grand Prix. So I believe they'll use that to, to their advantage for sure. But, you know, I, can't, I don't think we can just go purely off testing. I'm sure Mercedes are going to bring things to the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend that will close that gap or put them ahead. Of, uh, of their competitors, but yeah, of course, I mean, certainly not the test that Mercedes are wanted, certainly their weakest test since uh, since 2014, and yeah, I mean, for that alone, you've got to criticise them, you know, it, it's been it's been quite a poor test for, for Mercedes, you know, they're usually right up in the top three of mileage, um, and they are in the bottom three this year in terms of mileage over the three days, so that's quite poor from them. They didn't quite do the long runs, which we're quite accustomed to seeing through preseason testing. But, you know, it is Mercedes. You will have to assume and give them the respect and assume that they are okay and going to be still very strong come this season. Um, but, yeah, it's certainly going to be a more challenging season than perhaps many of us expected for the reigning world champions, um, certainly after this three-day preseason test. Yeah, I think... I mean, I kind of was hoping anyway it would be closer pace-wise between, say, Mercedes and Red Bull. I think definitely the gap has closed on pace, but I still think realistically they are, again, team to beat. I still think in Bahrain they'll be, you know, right up there in pole position and winning the Grand Prix, but it won't be a sure thing um, all the time. There will be races where the gap will be a bit closer and they'll have to get it a lot more right and they won't be able to just rest on their laurels but i still think this team because we've seen it so many times in the past where they've been not quite where we expect them to be during testing and then come the first couple grand prix they obliterate everyone and they're back to the old you know dominant mercedes so i still think they'll be absolutely fine uh red bull though who we'll go into now definitely did have a very good test probably the best team in testing in terms of reliability how the car looked on track the pace i still think um 
isn't the strongest in the field. It, I think it is closer, again, to Mercedes, and they are looking definitely a lot better than this time last year uh, where the car was a bit unstable at the rear end. But, yeah, Red Bull, a lot better looking. And with what I think is a stronger driver lineup, you would think this team is going to start the season off stronger. But if, you know... Like I've said, with the team they're going up against, Mercedes, unless they really do struggle in the first couple Grand Prix, I still can't say that Red Bull are going to have a car that's quick enough to win Grand Prix, you know, on pure pace. I think they will win Grand Prix, of course, in 2021, because there will be races where Mercedes, um, even if they're dominant, you know, fuck up. But I. I, I, you know, being closer at the start of the season, I think you have to say, even if they don't have a car that is on pole position, say, in one of the first three or four Grand Prix, even if they are two or three tenths closer, I think you'd have to say that that's a pretty good start to the season because normally, you look at the comparison between Mercedes and Red Bull at the start of the season, the gap tends to be six or seven tenths of a second between those two teams and tends to close over the season. So if Red Bull can, as we've said in the past, start the season off a bit closer and then do what they normally do through a season and improve, then, you know, Red Bull can be a, a bit closer. But it does depend on, you know, Mercedes showing that improvement, which I think they will. Um, I still think in Bahrain in a couple of weeks or a week from now, um, I think they will be the second quickest team still think Mercedes are the favourites, and I still am not going to predict uh, Red Bull to, say, get pole position or win a Grand Prix because I'm just so used to Mercedes dominating and being so great that I could never possibly expect that. But Nib, on the other hand, um, is very confident of Red Bull's chances. Um, so, Nib, say for the first five or six Grand Prix's, do you think Red Bull will be able to actually give Mercedes a proper run for their money and be right there pace-wise in qualifying and Grand Prix? Yes, I do. Absolutely, yes, I do. <laughs> well, Chaz, Chaz has tried to absolutely stitch me up there, but uh, he's, he's, he hasn't fully stitched me up by trying to get me to say that Red Bull are going to win three out of the first four races, which I kind of jokingly <laughs> said before recording this. Um, but no, I mean... Based off of this, Red Bull absolutely look like they have a very, very strong car. You know, that Honda, basically what is the 2022 power unit, is looking, you know, pretty strong. And we saw that also with um with Alpha Tauri throughout this test, of course, which we will get onto a little bit later on in this podcast. But, I mean, I don't think... I don't know how you can't sit here and say that, that Red Bull aren't in a position to challenge. They absolutely are in a position at the moment to challenge Mercedes. And, you know, this is certainly the, the clock. This is absolutely Red Bull's best test that they've had in the vest in the V6 hybrid era. Um, probably the best they've looked since 2013 um, at, at testing. You know, just the car looks good. The drivers are happy, you know. Um, I mean, just look at, look at this time last year in preseason testing in Barcelona. That car was all over the place, you know, of course, Albon crashed, there was spins, whereas, you know, there was no troubles whatsoever, you know, there was maybe Verstappen running a little bit wide uh, at turn 11, which maybe was the biggest drama which they had throughout the whole entire testing, but the funny thing was he still bloody set the fastest time at that stage, you know, just because he was pushing pretty hard, and yeah, I I'm pretty confident in Red Bull's ability to challenge Mercedes and to be right there with them certainly at the start of the season. And for Red Bull, you know, usually they're not there at the start of the season. It's it's almost like they haven't been there at the start of the season since... Well, I mean, they were never really super strong at the start of the season um, when they were dominant. Only really 2011 where they won. Jeez, how many did they win? Was it nine out of the first nine? Um, which they won or something ridiculous like that. With Vettel had an 81-point lead at... at um, at the Silverstone Grand Prix or whatever it was, you know, so I really do think that they can challenge Mercedes to start the season. There, I said it, be happy. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I I totally disagree for obvious reasons because <laughs> I just honestly I'd be amazed. I would be amazed if Red Bull were able to. And I know, of course, they have Max Verstappen, and he does really help uh, put that team a lot closer than sometimes they should be to say the front of the grid. Uh, look at last season, that's really proof of that. But I just, I don't see it. I just do not see that happening. I think it's because, like you said, they've not started a season well in so long. It doesn't feel like it's normal for them to actually start off well. We're just so used to them starting off not bad, but not, you know, really good. And then ending the season really good or great. So, yeah, I think, again... They'll be closer, but I still don't think they'll be quite there. But I just want to ask Nib, now that you said you think Red Bull will be, you know, challenging. Do you think Max Verstappen has a realistic chance at winning the World Championship, yes or no? I mean, at the moment, you have to say yes. I mean, that could very much change come the first <laughs> race. But, you know, Red Bull typically gets strong stronger as the season goes on. Um, that's obviously because Mercedes stopped developing and Red Bull sort of, you know, keep on developing the car pretty late. But at the moment, as we sit here on the 16th of March, 2021, I have to say that, yes, he has a he has a possibility of winning the championship. And I'm not... Uh, listen, the lid is the, the lid is on. The, the lid is not off. But, you know, Red Bull can challenge absolutely you have to say that now you're trying to stitch me up <laughs> um i i just I'm, i there's no way i can again agree with that i i will say though i really hope i really hope you're right because it would be great um if we had you know hamilton and verstappen head to head but i don't know i just I cannot let myself believe that, you know, such a thing can happen. But if it happens, then, you know, great. But we'll see, I guess. Uh, but I'm still going easily, Mercedes, uh, for the season. Now, we'll move on from those two and go on to the next team, McLaren. Who well, I think, you look at the midfield teams, um, and I think Nib will confirm this as well. This is definitely the strongest looking midfield team consistently in pre-season testing over the three days they looked very very good never really looked weak at all i mean they did have a lack of running i think at one point on one of the days with lando norris but most of the time they looked really good daniel ricardo looked right at home so did lando and no uh, norris in the new mclaren pace i think looks good they weren't as quick as alpha tauri on the final day of testing of course but i think alpha tauri were definitely pushing a bit harder than mclaren i think mclaren have definitely got a lot more to show so, yeah, I think McLaren, I'd have to say at the moment, they're looking just bang on third best team on the grid. And I think definitely at the first Grand Prix, I see McLaren having the third quickest car. After that, I mean, there, there might be races where they're not quite third quickest on the grid, but they're looking strong. Um, and I don't think they'll be millions of miles away from, say, Red Bull. Um, I, they're clearly behind Red Bull, um, but I don't think they're, you know, a second a lap slower. They're not uh, a massive gap behind. It's maybe extended uh, by a couple tenths, but they're not too far, I think, off of uh, Red Bull if they have any issues um, at all during the season. But yeah, McLaren looking good. Daniel Ricciardo and Lando Norris already looking at home in this McLaren. And honestly, I'd say my prediction of McLaren... Possibly winning a Grand Prix if we get a crazy Grand Prix where Mercedes and Red Bull falter. I don't think it's that wacky um, of a prediction. Because again, if we do get one of those races where mental stuff happens, I could easily see Ricardo or Norris um, taking a Grand Prix victory. I mean, they almost took one in um, at Monza with Carlos Sainz in 2020. So almost happened uh, last year, but yeah, McLaren looking great, and Nib, you'd have to say for your man Daniel Ricciardo, this move to McLaren is already looking very good. Yeah, well, as as I've told you privately over the last couple of days, I am very, very happy 
with uh, with how McLaren have started. Ricardo, I think, out of anyone that's gone to a new team, looks the most settled. Um, settled at their at their new team, he looks very comfortable. He looks happy to be there, and that's that's all credit to McLaren because they come out and said that they're going to do absolutely everything they possibly can to uh, to try and get him settled in at McLaren uh, to feel at home, and he he does feel at home. And I never expected to to be so happy to see Ricardo, you know, in orange. Uh, at McLaren, you know, I'm very happy. Even though they had like the third least laps, um, they were very happy with with e- how everything went. How, how everything went, not went. Um, <laughs> you know, they they said they got through all of their programs, and you know, yeah, they end up behind AlphaTauri on the final day, but that's because they weren't doing. Um, they were doing race runs uh, on in like the final hour. On, on day three, they, they weren't doing any low fuel runs. They did that a little bit earlier, and at this stage, what Ricardo was two, three tenths off of Stappen at that stage. Um, so yeah, we don't have a clear picture where they are on low fuel um, compared to everyone else because well, that's what everyone else did on the in the final hour. But you know, McLaren they look good, and I think out of anywhere on the grid, I'm pretty comfortable to say that they are absolutely in third at the moment. Um, and, you know, they've got the, a couple of nice innovations with, of course, the diffuser, which has been well, well talked about. So, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very excited for my boy, Danny Rick, and, of course, for Lando. And McLaren certainly look very good. Yeah, they do. Um, and I'm definitely excited to see what they can do in 2021. And I think, really, it should be McLaren just building on what they did last year with more great results now next up we're going to go on to ferrari who didn't quite have i think the testing program we thought they were going to have uh, they had a couple of reliability issues along the way uh, we still don't know how much power they've gained officially because we need to wait really till qualifying i'd say at the first grand prix uh, to really say that but we thought we would see really you know instant or clear proof of this team being quite a lot quicker kind of like alfa romeo and alfa tauri have shown who we'll get onto later but we haven't really seen that with ferrari the car at times has looked a bit understeery still hasn't looked always balanced um i thought on the final day of testing they did show a bit more uh, good pace but i still don't think they are quicker than teams at the moment such as mclaren and alfa tauri so i think at best you would say they're probably fifth fastest um on the grid but we still haven't seen, you know, teams like Aston Martin and Alpine. They might be uh, quite a bit quicker, and they haven't really pushed that hard, those two particular teams. So, yeah, it's not really clear where, t- you know, Ferrari are. I hope they're not too far away from McLaren. But again, it's not clear to say that they've absolutely improved. I mean, they probably do. And by some reports, it does sound like they have more power. But is it enough? We don't know. Um, Nib, where in the pecking order in the top 10, where would you say at the moment you're confident of putting Ferrari? Say, would you say sixth? I have not a Scooby Doo where anyone from fourth to eighth are in the <laughs> pecking order. You know, crikey, they could be eighth. They could be. Oh, I don't think they're fourth. Okay, I don't think they're fourth. Um,. I think they're probably sixth at the moment in the pecking order. You know, there's they've certainly made improvements with the engine, and of course, because you know they've got a bit more power, they can run a bit more downforce, which was causing issues for them last season. Um, I I have no, I really don't know where Ferrari are. To be honest, you know, Carlos Sainz had a couple of issues. Uh, the the car did look quite awful through the first like one and a half days. But then, then the car certainly started to improve and to look better on track. But I really can't say with any confidence where they are are in the midfield. And that, that not only for Ferrari, that goes for nearly every single midfield team. You know, really don't know where they are uh, whatsoever. But I think we'll obviously really see where they are in Bahrain. But I think there are promising signs for Ferrari. They, they could be... They could be better off than last season, but, you know, they could be even worse. They could be behind Alfa Romeo, as Karen Chandok was saying, uh, basically all test long. 
You know, I, I, we don't really know with Ferrari, <laughs> but the, one thing's for sure is that they've certainly improved the engine, which was much, much, much needed. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think if I was to say now, I'd say again, at best, they're probably the fifth quickest team. But, and that's another thing, even if, um, let's say they are the seventh quickest team in, in Bahrain, because of the drivers they have, they might still end up getting some points. Because, uh, of course, their two drivers are very good. And the midfield pack is still very close. So, yeah, I think hard to say with Ferrari where exactly they are. I think the the only thing I could, I guess you could say from a disappointing point of view is that there has not been a clear sign of improvement. Again, with teams similar to, say, Alpha Tauri or Alpha Romeo, where you can clearly see the improvement. Ferrari haven't quite shown that. Um, so hopefully we see more in the first Grand Prix. Now, we'll go on to Alpha Tauri next, who I think definitely we can say are, or at least for me, are currently um, in the top four on the grid for the teams. Their car looked great over the three days of testing. Um, Yuki Tsunoda was great on the final day. Was pushing probably quite a bit harder than others, but that car on track really did look very good. Pierre Gasly looked great when he was in the car car looks reliable it looks on track it doesn't really seem to have any glaring weaknesses so yeah at the moment i'd have to say alpha tauri are probably the biggest improvers and surprises of 2021 and i'm very happy that this team is right up there because they've always been a very good team um i've never tended to start seasons electrifying in the past but I think definitely for the first Grand Prix or two, because obviously the Imola Grand Prix uh, last year, they were very quick. And I think they'll be very quick this year as well. Um, also, the data from their shakedown a couple months ago or a month ago, sorry, will help them as well. But um, yeah, first couple Grand Prix, I think Alpha Tauri are going to be very quick. They'll definitely have probably both cars in the top 10. After that, might start to get a bit difficult if, you know, Ferrari, Aston Martin and... Alpine show the improvement that they should, but I think we can definitely say right now that Alpha Tauri mean business, uh, certainly for the first couple Grand Prix. And I think you would echo this, Nib, that this team at the moment would have to be a dark horse for a, a good result in 2021 in the Constructors' Championship. I probably wouldn't even say dark horse um they looked really good even before they did sort of their headline times on on day three where yuki sonoda i mean <laughs> well let's just say yuki sonoda was also activating his drs a good 200 meters before um where it would be yeah. saying qualifying so obviously that gains a, a little bit of time but there's no doubt that they've got a very good car underneath them of course the honda engine and i must say on day one of the test, it really struck me as probably one of the best looking cars on the grid. It kind of went, kind of went under the radar a little bit of how good the delivery looked. Um, it looked very, very sexy, and I think also that helps with having the Honda on the rear wing. And you know, you have spoken about this as well. That looks absolutely fantastic on the Red Bull, also. But mm. yeah, I'm I'm really confident with with AlphaTauri. Actually, I think they will be a top five team certainly to to start us off with. Um, obviously, that will be either you know, fourth or fifth. I don't think they'll be third. Um, you know, I think obviously that's where McLaren will be, as we've just said earlier. But yeah, they've looked really good. Gasly looked really good all all week long. And then, of course, Sonoda really stole the um, the spotlight on, on the final day um, with the evening session. But, you know, I, I must say, it, it seems like everyone loves Yuki Sonoda. And I, I'm absolutely there for it. You know, Yuki, he's... How can't you love Yuki? He's quite funny on Twitter as well as Yuki Sonoda. He likes to troll about his height and everything quite a lot. Although they need to verify his account because that is his account if you possibly saw his tweets. Um, so verify him on Twitter. Come on, Twitter. Get get your act together. Um, so yeah, I, I am I am really rooting for Alpha Tauri to have a to have a good result. Um this season, of course. It's gonna be hard to top the highs of last season, but I think oh, in general, they might just have a better car than what they did last year. Yeah, 
I think I said this uh, during my streams that they're really looking like they're going to start the season how they finished uh, 2020. Because in 2020, at the very end, first, uh, last three or four Grand Prix, sorry, they were probably top five on the grid then uh, for quickest cars. So it looks like they've just continued off where they left off. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of rooting them for them as well because, again, they are a great team uh, considering, you know, what they don't have compared to the bigger teams and what they're able to do. So I'm I'm hoping they can get, if they really do start off even stronger than we think, it'd be nice if they could finish in the top five in the constructors. It would be really nice if they could do that. Uh, now we'll get on to Aston Martin and Alpine. Now these two teams, very hard to say where they are. One thing we can say though is that Aston Martin did not have good reliability uh, during testing and that's definitely something they need to work on. Uh, suffering gearbox issues um, on one of the days, I think it was day two, and then suffering a lot of reliability issues on the final day and they didn't really do enough single lap running so keen to see what they can uh, really show in practice in a couple or in a week's time. Um, and then Alpine, again, we haven't really seen what their single lap pace is properly. And, I mean, the, the reliability looks good, but it's hard to say really where they are. And again, where Aston Martin is. I mean, I think these two teams will be kind of around the same part of the grid. But I don't know if I can say that they're going to be, you know, up there with McLaren, say, to start with. Because we don't really know and they haven't really shown anything as of yet that clearly illustrates that you know they can be right up there like they were last season i hope they can because it'd be great for us if they were with so many great drivers involved of course in those battles but i think these two teams are definitely the ones we need to look out for um in the you know in the practice sessions at the first grand prix because didn't really, you know, go for it as much as, say, McLaren and Alpha Tauri did at times. So, yeah, I'm very keen to see what they can do. Um, I do think Aston Martin, though, probably have the better car. Um, Alpine, I think, are probably a tenth or two behind them. But it is still very close. Uh, Nib, what would you say of Aston and Alpine? Where do you think they figure in this battle in the midfield? Yeah, well, it's really tough to tell with these two teams because they didn't do a lot of um, a lot of short running, you know, uh, low low fuel runs, I should say, um, especially Aston Martin because well, they couldn't. Uh, we'll we'll go with Aston Martin first, but wow, what an underwhelming preseason test for Aston Martin. Certainly not, you know, the third best looking car of the preseason testing last year, which I kind of thought could have been the case, especially with them having the Mercedes rear end um, of last year and all of that. So, yeah, definitely very, very underwhelming. <laughs> Sebastian Vettel, I feel so sorry for Seb Sebastian Vettel. Um, he didn't get much running whatsoever over the entire test, and he's certainly well behind where he probably wanted to be and needs to be. Um, for the first Grand Prix. So I think it's going to take him at least um, a good few races to get to get settled into that team. Um, you know, the race pace looks pretty decent. They'll be somewhere in the midfield, but I don't think they'll be at the top of the midfield right away like they were to start off, you know, last season. Um, then we'll go into Alpine. Um, I must say, Fernando Alonso looked right at home immediately back in that car and I must say his helmet with the livery looks absolutely gorgeous um you know of course they've got quite a well quite an interesting air intake don't they it's very very fat and it was quite funny having their um oh I can't I can't remember his name for the life of me again one of the bosses at Alpine uh, saying that people need to stop body shaming our car I thought that was quite <laughs> that was quite a funny comment to make um, but yeah, they're somewhere there in the midfield. I, we won't really see until qualifying where they are because they didn't do that short run pace. But you know, I, I think I think they're in a pretty good position, probably similar to what they were last season, um, if not just a tiny little bit weaker. Um, 
who really knows? I know it's really tough to tell with these two teams, and that's what makes it really hard judging this midfield, because either of these teams could easily be fourth or fifth, but we don't know. We just don't know, um, and that's what is making this season um, so exciting, just looking forward to it. That's what makes me wish that the race uh, was this weekend, you know? I really, I really bloody wish it was this weekend, but <laughs> we've got to wait an extra 10 days for on-track running, uh, and then we can really see whereabouts this midfield is. Yeah, I, I think they might be up there in the top four. We'll have to see, but I think we'll definitely have just a monumental battle in that midfield, without a doubt, even if Aston Martin and Alpine are behind, say, McLaren and Alfa Tauri and maybe Ferrari, it's, it's going to be so close. And it's really going to come down to the drivers themselves as to who finishes where. Another team, though, possibly in that battle, is Alfa Romeo. Now, a couple people out there think, as you said, Karun Shandhok and I think Lawrence Barreto of the F1 website, um, they really think Alfa Romeo have a really good car. Now, it did look good in testing, and they finished 2020 a lot stronger than they started it. And again, similar to Alpha Tauri, the kind of starting 2021, how they finished 2020, which is good. Um, but I, I, I kind of like at the front of the field, I can't bring myself to say that they are going to be right in the mix. Because the last couple seasons they've ended up finishing, you know, quite low down in the championship um, at the end of the day. So again, I I can't really, I'm, you know, I'm not going to throw it out there that I think Alfa Romeo are going to end up finishing in the points in the first Grand Prix and be really quick or anything, because I don't really think that's going to happen, but they've definitely improved a lot. So Kind of similar to Aston Martin and Alpine, even though they did push Alfa Romeo quite a bit harder than those two teams. We don't really know where they are. They might be really quick. They might be a lot quicker than last year, but still behind all those teams. We just don't know. Um, yeah, so I have no idea, to be honest. And then when it comes to the final two teams, um, I think... I, I, I'd i say at the moment, I think Williams will start off with the quicker car and have the quicker car um, for the season, especially in the hands of uh, Mr. Saturday, George Russell. I think he'll definitely be out-qualifying the Haas cars um, a lot in 2021. And then Haas, I think, definitely do have the worst car. But Alfa Romeo, I think, definitely a lot of intrigue there. Wouldn't you say, Nib, as well? Yeah, I mean, well, we already had Kimi Raikkonen coming out and saying that uh, their car was faster than last year. And well, we looked, they're faster than last year at Bahrain already. So I think I think a lot of credit has to go down to the Ferrari power unit um, improvement to that. Um, but I think I think it, I think it's fair to say that this is probably the best they've looked since 2018 when they had Charles Leclerc on the team. Um, I think is that fair to say? Do you reckon? Yeah, because. Back then, they were around... I mean, they didn't start the season off that quick, but they were able to get in there, uh, you know, in the, say, just outside the top 10 and get some points here and there. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I I, I, def I, think, I think it's pretty fair to put Alfa Romeo in that midfield mix. Um, I don't think they are, you know, in that bottom three. I think it's now a bottom two. With uh, with Haas and Williams, I think I'm pretty confident in saying. Uh, as we'll now move on to them, um, it's really hard to tell. Of course, I think Haas might start out just a little bit faster than Williams. Uh, but then, you know, Haas have come in and said they're not going to upgrade the car whatsoever. So then I think throughout the season, Williams will start to move ahead of Haas. And of course, I don't think you can expect much of Mazepin and Schumacher. Uh, in their first season in the sport, especially more so Mick. And it's good. I don't think there is too much pressure on him at Haas. Um, but yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be quite an interesting season to see where Alfa Romeo are. Uh, that, that's one thing I'm really excited about, to see where exactly where they are. I think they could somehow be sixth or whatever, sixth fastest. They could be getting into Q2 with both cars. But, jeez, 
just making me talk, just thinking about this and talking about it is making me so <laughs> excited. Um, so, so excited for this season and I absolutely cannot wait for it to get underway. Yeah, I mean, me too. I, 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 I think another reason I'm looking forward to it is because what I've thought of what the possible grid is, say from, say, P5 down to almost near the back of the grid is probably going to end up being wrong and i'm excited to see who proves me wrong and who's you know right up there it's going to be so so close in the midfield i think the midfield this year is probably going to be the best it's ever been um in a long long time if not in the, really in the history of f1 that i can remember um and definitely the quality of drivers in that pack is easily the strongest it's ever been so definitely looking forward to that a lot now there are two questions I'm going to put to Nib um, that I'm not going to answer yet because I'm going to save that for a video, another video coming out before the season starts in Bahrain. But I'm going to put to Nib and see what his answers are. So first, Nib, what are your final predictions for the Constructors' Championship first? Yeah, see, Chaz, Chaz has taken the cheap way out here by making sure he doesn't have to do it, but I have to do it, but I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> um, I'm still going to go Mercedes first. You know, I, I will say I think Mercedes will finish first in the constructors. I'm not going to give any reasoning because I mean, you know, we how can we possibly tell at this stage? Um, Red Bull second, McLaren third, fourth, fourth. <laughs> like Jesus. Oh, this is the thing. Will Alpha Tauri be consistent enough throughout the whole entire season? I don't think they will. So I think I'm going to put Aston Martin in fourth. Fifth, I'm going to put... Oh, I don't know, Chaz. I'm going to put Alpine fifth. I'm going to put Ferrari in sixth. Uh, then seventh, uh, Alpha Tauri. I, do, I, re I, I really don't listen. Okay, I really don't think that's how it's going to be. To be honest, I, I really don't. Um, <laughs> then Alpha Romeo eighth, Williams ninth, Haas tenth. I, I, I honestly. I, I don't know about the midfield. I th I don't I disagree with what, even what I've just said then. So I don't know why I've said <laughs> it. Just just allow it. Allow it, all right? Allow it. That's it. I'm done. Um <laughs> Um I was going to ask as well. Maybe this will be a bit easier, but what what are your top 10 for the drivers championship going to be? <laughs> oh, now you really trying to stitch me up. I think this is this one's a bit more of a stitch up. <laughs> Okay, I'm just saying it. I'm just saying it. I'm not boring. Verstappen's winning the world title. <laughs> uh, with Sergio Perez in second. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, Hamilton. Hamilton will be in second. Uh, Bottas third. Perez fourth. Ricardo fifth. Uh, I'm gonna say Alonso sixth. Norris seventh. Mm. Oh, what about Leclerc? Leclerc eighth, um, Science ninth, uh, then Gasly tenth. I think I've waffled. I think I've dribbled right. everywhere because that doesn't align line up with anything I've just said with with the constructors. Because I said Ferrari would be seventh, <laughs> but yeah, I I have no idea. I have no idea. We have to wait to practice and to the after the first race. <laughs> I think. I think that though just shows that's how close the midfield is that we can't make a prediction. I mean, you can't. And even when I think about it, and again, I will reveal mine later um, in a, another video, but every time I think about it, I, I come up with a different order in my head. I just cannot nail down in my head like a yes, this is what it's going to be. I just cannot possibly agree with myself um at the moment i mean the top two is for me quite certain but i say after that and maybe after you know mclaren as well it's just impossible absolutely impossible because if we get to like you said 
uh, practice and, you know, one team just, say Alfa Romeo, end up finishing 5th and 6th or 6th and 7th, then it's going to just throw absolutely everything all over the place. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's probably the biggest takeaway for me coming away from testing is that the field for this year is definitely definitely closer. I won't say it's massively closer, but it's definitely closer. And the midfield, again, to predict that, if someone out there is able to correctly predict that by at least 90%, then you deserve a medal <laughs> because I just don't see how anyone could. But yeah, I'll reveal mine in another video, which is going to be kind of a season preview -y type of video. Uh, but for this preseason testing podcast, I want to thank Nib um, for coming on for this and you know giving your thoughts. And uh, I'm sure we'll uh, see you for the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend. Yeah, you certainly will see me for the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend. Uh, I do apologize for my predictions. I, I've just literally dribbled all <laughs> over my keyboard making those predictions. Like, <laughs> good Lord. Like I've I've even had time to think about it, but yeah, I have I haven't a Scooby Doo when it comes to how the midfield will be. Uh, the only I'm only confident really about five positions in the whole thing, and that's the top three, and then the last two. Any anyone else could could finish anywhere, and as you as you could say, you know, it wouldn't surprise me something bonkers like that to happen, where Alpha Romeo were fourth and fifth, or something. Oh no no no, <laughs> seventh and eighth, because the fact. <laughs> Go on, see, it, I've lost my mind. That's enough for me. Um, thanks for having me on this again, Chaz, and uh, I can't wait to talk more F1 with you once we finally get to the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm sure at that race it'll be completely different the order to what we actually think it's going to be. But, guys, let me know in the comments section down below what do you think the pecking order is at the moment? What do you think it'll be at the first Grand Prix? And if you want to, what do you think the uh, Constructors Championship will look like um, at the end of the season? And also, you can go give your drivers uh, championship predictions if you want as well. Again, I'll be doing mine in about a week's time, just before the Bahrain Grand Prix weekend gets underway. And of course, I'll be doing a qualifying uh, watch along, a race watch along for that, a practice three watch along as well. So don't forget to come around for that content and subscribe to the channel and all of that. Bottom right to the screen, you can do it there. Uh, or you can go to my channel page and do it there. Don't forget to smash the like button for more content like this. Don't forget as well to share this video everywhere you can. Don't forget to join the Discord, link below in the description. And again, like I said, comment down below your thoughts on what we said and what your thoughts are going into the season. But guys, until next time, uh, the next video should be, again, a season preview from myself in a few days' time. Uh, make sure to, you know, stay up on uh, to date with the channel for that. So until then, it's been me, Chazra HD. Goodbye.